Come on, you'll love this, my older brother, Zeke, said. Wednesday night, 8 p.m., I stood at the foot of the Night Terror's haunted house. Wasn't I too old for stuff like this? I'm 22. Halloween is next weekend. But my brother, Zeke Noble, my best friend, Nestor Vasquez, and their dates wanted to visit this place. Why? To get me out of the house. I'd been dumped six months ago by Asher Quintino, just as spring semester at the community college ended. Asher was the man I wanted to spend the rest of my life with, but he didn't feel the same way about me. He had been secretly partying and sleeping with other men without telling me. He wanted an open relationship with no commitments. I wanted someone I could rely on. Rather than talk to me, he transferred to UNLV for summer semester and left our apartment to live with one of his other boyfriends. He never told me where, but he did call me late one Saturday, the noise of a wild party in the background, and drunkenly said, I don't want to spend my life with a selfish, repressed, insecure, codependent, clingy, workaholic. You drag me down. At first I was confused. Do those terms actually go together? Then the word sunk in. Fine, I yelled, but the utilities bill is due and rent is due and we have to pay extra fees for the high-speed internet you demanded. Do you want to break the lease as well? You know how much that costs? Plus, we still have to pay for everything else. I can't afford it alone. Are you going to pay your half? No, he said. I've left you, so deal with it. So you skip out, I said. Leave me with all the bills and the responsibility for closing the apartment? Asher, grow up. He hung up instead and blocked me. Almost immediately, I regretted my words. Within a week, I was devastated. Emotionally, financially, mentally. Once all the financials were done, and it was a big bill too, I snail mailed an itemized invoice of what he owed to his parents. I never heard anything back. Trigger my massive depression. Except for work, I never left home. I even unenrolled in college. Guess who binged on nachos and cheap cheese sauce? Mom wanted me to see a school counselor. As long as I'm enrolled, I get ten sessions a year. Dad yelled at me for dropping out. Nestor kept trying to get me to go to bars with him. I'm not in the mood to be social. Or date. I'm Elijah Noble, a junior that might graduate someday in business management. Not today, though. Which brings us to now. Haunted houses are for kids. Everybody knows that they are nothing but idiots in costumes trying to scare everybody for a buck. Look at the front of this place. It's an old warehouse painted black with dripping red paint that's supposed to be blood. The artist did a reasonably good job. The place is covered with renditions of every movie monster I had ever heard of. It's one big collage with fake flickering candle sconces simulating something spooky. Give me a break. Zeke, I said to my brother, just let me go home. No siree, Bob, my older brother said. You're getting out of the house. What's so scary about a bunch of guys in cheap costing screaming at you, I said. Nestor, my best friend, was at the front of our group. He had his arm around his girl, Annette. Next came my older brother, Zeke, and his girl, Janelle. Last was me slowly trudging behind everybody, as if I didn't want to be here. They were laughing. I wasn't. Guys, I said, I really don't want to be here. You enjoy. I'll just Uber home, okay? God, you are such a downer lately. No, Nestor said. You are a serious 911 case. You need some fun, stat. My brother, Zeke, didn't even turn around when he said, Elijah, you've been indoors so long your skin is whiter than ice cream, and at this rate you'll lose all your friends. 
Time to live a little. Elijah, Nestor said. You're going to have fun whether you like it or not. Besides, Zeke said, Mom is tired of you moping around the house. That's right. After my boyfriend left, I couldn't afford payments on anything, so I moved back home. I'm almost a neat. I'm single and I'm depressed. My life sucks. Of all of us, I'm the only gay guy. It seems that the guys I date don't want long-term commitments, and those that do don't want to be committed to me, like ex-boyfriend and jerk Asher. Nestor and Zeke paid the entrance fee. Tonight was donate night for St. Horace's Food Bank, and if you brought a can of something, you got a dollar off. One of their girlfriends handed over a bag of canned goods, and then my brother and my best friend dragged me inside. I was not having fun. Loud screams came from somewhere. A howling wind erupted from hidden speakers, howling wolves also. Most chilling of all were sounds of heavy chainsaws grinding away at something. Those sounds were not coming from the speakers. Neither were the sudden screams that went with them. We entered the haunted house. On the walls were various yellowed wanted posters, the newest being for Billy McSlaughter, a.k.a. the mass murderer Chainsaw Billy. The picture was a blood-splattered hockey mask. Give me a break. Does anyone think this is real? A woman dressed like a vampire from the 1800s greeted us. I bid welcome to our newest victims, she said and say goodbye to the last full night of sleep you will ever have. I should mention that the zombies are restless and are looking for fresh brains. Tell me it's not too scary, Janelle said. I don't like scary things. Relax, Zeke said. Welcome to Night Terrors, the vampire lady continued. Police have issued a warning. Chainsaw Billy has escaped the asylum, and the police have reported him in the area. It's said that he stalked and killed eleven people before the police caught him. He marks his kills with slashes on his chainsaw handle, and he's looking for a twelfth kill. Whatever you do, don't be alone. And if you see him, run. He's a psycho. And now for a few rules. Don't touch anything. Don't touch anyone. Please keep cell phones in your pockets and don't take pictures. Sudden flashes can disrupt some of the electronics and startle some of our actors. Most important of all, remember to scream. It shows us how much you enjoy the experience. Yada, yada, yada. I already don't want to be here. Don't make it worse. We'll send you in groups of two, spaced five to ten seconds apart, the vampire lady said. My brother slipped the lady ten dollars and whispered something. They both looked at me. I suddenly became my own group. Yippee! My best friend and his girlfriend went first. My brother and his girlfriend went next. I went alone. The first room was a mad scientist's lab with strange lab mutants dancing in cages. Mad scientists cackled and yelled. Frankenstein's monster strained at his bonds, howling. All were screaming with some weird ancient song about weird science in the background. Boring. Then came a long hallway with malleable black walls and hands that tried breaking through the black membrane. It was lit with strobe lights and accompanied by an industrial metal background noise. Boring. The third room was filled with coffins and odd zombies shambling around, shouting and screaming at people. For their music, they played Living Dead Girl by Rob Zombie. Get me out of here. The next room looked like an old warehouse with several broken cages inside. A chainsaw shrieked. Hidden speakers played a heavy metal song, Twisted Transistor by Korn. Some voice screamed, It's Billy, run! A scream erupted next to me. Startled, I jumped. Fog swept across the floor, 
and out of a couple of air ducts. The light alternated between complete blackness and red strobes. Old mannequin parts littered the blood-stained, concrete floor, and some were covered in fake blood. At least I hope it was fake. He came around the corner, carrying a 24-inch chainsaw in one hand. He had the power and presence of an oversized monster truck, a six-foot-two body of pure rage. The lights went out, then flickered to red. His hair was dirty blonde, dabbled with dried blood. On his face, he wore a hockey mask the color of old bone, also stained with blood. The lights went out, then flickered to red. He was shirtless, and it was easy to see why he only needed one hand to hold the large chainsaw. The lights went out, then flickered to red. This guy was built industrial pecs that could probably bend iron bars. Did I mention they were splattered with blood? He had a rack of abs that could double his steel pipes, also splattered with blood, and dusted with a smattering of hair. His hands were covered with heavy leather gloves. The muscles on his forearms made distinct lines I could only stare at. The lights went out, then flickered to red. Look at those biceps and his shoulders. He had a tattoo on his left shoulder, a tribal design that spread to his left peck. This man was a semi-truck of sexy, and I was a deer in the middle of the highway, staring at his headlights, unable to move, and about to be his next victim. I held my breath. Goosebumps formed across my arms. The lights went out, then flickered to red. Elijah, he growled from behind the blood-splattered hockey mask. I'm coming for you. I stopped and stared and stared and stared. The lights went out, then flickered to red. Elijah, his raspy voice yelled, and he revved the chainsaw. The chainsaw screamed a high-pitched wail. The smell of burnt oil stained the air, along with the coppery tang. Had they used real blood? The lights went out, then flickered to red. I kicked something, a piece of an arm. It had to be foam or plastic, right? Elijah, he screamed. You get special treatment. Impossibly fast, he lunged towards me, chainsaw raised high in the air. The lights went out, then flickered to red. I couldn't move. I could only watch as this man's abs moved like a living thing, at the peak of his boxers above his blood-stained jeans and the smell of a musk cologne. I didn't want to move. I couldn't move. For the first time in six months, I had completely forgotten about my ex. What college did he go to again? What was his name? I only had eyes for Chain Saw Billy. The lights went out, then flickered to red. Elijah, Chain Saw Billy yelled, accenting the middle syllable of my name. I'm going to chop you up into little parts and feed them to my pet piranha. Yum, yum, yum. The lights went out, then flickered to red. That was the corniest line I've heard for a long time. Something loosened up inside me, and part of me wanted to laugh. Maybe Zeke was right. Maybe this was exactly what I needed. I crouched and yelled, Gotta catch me first, Chainsaw Sexy. The chainsaw revved up, and I imagined Chainsaw Billy smiling inside the mask as he yelled, No one escapes Chainsaw Billy. Catch me, I yelled. He ran towards me, chainsaw screaming as Billy revved it high. I ducked to the side. This almost felt like flirting. We're playing tag, and Billy was playing with a two-foot chainsaw. The lights went out, then flickered to red. Billy whirled, and I ducked again. The chainsaw came up. I jumped on a wooden box, painted to look like a crate. Billy roared, kicked a couple of body parts to the side, and lunged at me. 
I jumped off the box, laughing. I ran back into the zombie room. Billy followed, chainsaw roaring. A man and woman scattered. Somebody screamed. The chainsaw revved again, and Billy yelled, Elijah, stand still. It's Billy, one of the zombies yelled. Run. Chainsaw Billy chased me through the zombie hall, and then I circled about. Billy still following. And we ran back into the chainsaw room. The couple screamed as Billy approached them, and they ran to the next room. The vampire room. The woman wouldn't stop screaming. I started running to the next room. But Chainsaw Billy stopped at the doorway and said, You've escaped me this time, Elijah. But when you come back this way, you're mine. He revved the chainsaw as high as it could go. I stared at his heaving, rippled, blood-stained abs. This must be the limit of his assigned territory. Too bad. For the first time in six months, I was having fun. Elijah, he growled. I dare you to come back and face me. When I get my hands on you, you won't like the things I do to you. I smiled, nodded, and ran back to Billy and kissed him on the mouth holes on his mask. The dried blood tasted like corn syrup. And I yelled, It's a date! Then I turned to catch up with my friends. I actually didn't catch up to them until we were outside. And Janelle said, Told you he'd like him. Somebody's having a good time, Nestor said. About time, Zeke said. I looked at my brother and best friend and their dates and finally said, So that's how Chainsaw Billy knew my name? You set this up? Did you ask him out? Zeke said. No, was I supposed to? I asked. Nestor looped his arm around my neck and said, Elijah, you are hopeless. I don't even know if he's gay, I said. Janelle stepped in and said, He's shirtless and showing off his body and throwing around a two-foot chainsaw with a pride sticker on it. What do you think? He's a friend of my roommate, Zeke said. And he's a theater major, and he's gay, and he's single. Loves events like this because he can cut loose. I never saw a pride sticker, I said. Like I said, Elijah's hopeless, Nestor said. We even gave Chainsaw Billy twenty bucks to make sure you had fun. I didn't know, I said. Is Billy even his real name? Well, if you had asked him out, you would have found out, Zeke said groaning. Nestor, you're right. Elijah is hopeless. That's probably why Asher left, I thought with an inner sigh. I always miss what's right in front of me. I'm afraid to take chances. I don't want to be social. And I'm hopeless. We went out for ice cream, and then I Ubered home while the guys continued their double date. Depressed, thinking about the chance I'd missed out on and kicking myself. At least one thing sort of went right. I'd kissed him. Technically, I kissed his mask, but by extension, it was still him. Could I be more desperate? I wanted to go back tomorrow night and see the crazy chainsaw maniac. I'm insane. He'd think I was stalking him. He'd think I was a creep. He'd think I was some desperate, lonely dude that didn't have a life. That last part was true. I am a desperate, lonely dude with no life. I stopped going to college, stopped hanging out with my friends, stopped doing anything I enjoyed. Maybe it's time to come back to life. I pulled out my phone and pulled up my contacts. There was Asher's contact info. Maybe it was time to stop mourning what could never be and begin living again. I deleted Asher's contact information and blocked his phone number. Time to move on. I pulled up the website for night terrors. Chainsaw Billy wouldn't remember me from anybody else, and on the rare chance he did, I could ask him out. I took a chance, and I bought the ticket. 
The next night, I stood in line at Night Terrors, the online ticket confirmation on my phone. I can't believe I'm doing this. And for a man I've basically never seen, and don't even know his name. He would think me a creep for coming back. I am nothing but a desperate, lonely man with no life jumping for a chance with a man who is paid to chase me around a haunted house. I'm not simply miserable. I'm pathetic. But I'm going in anyway. The first room was the same, the mad scientist laboratory. Then the hallway with all the hands sticking through the walls. Then the zombie room. The warehouse room with the broken cages was empty. Nobody was there. Fog still puddled across the floor. Red strobes flashed. Hard metal screeched through the speakers. But no chainsaw Billy. The lights went out, then flickered to red. He must be off chasing somebody, or on break, or... Elijah, growled a voice just behind me and slowly growing into a shout. I told you what would happen if I saw you again. You're mine. The chainsaw revved and screamed. I turned. Somehow, Chainsaw Billy was right behind me, his chainsaw raised high, with more blood splattered across his naked chest. I hadn't even heard him. Startled, I screamed and dove out of the way. His chainsaw hit the floor where I had been, making sparks. I rolled and came to my feet, suddenly feeling alive. You're mine forever, he yelled. I took a couple of steps back, yelling, Go out with me, tonight. What? he yelled back. You don't even know me. You're a crazy psychopath who chops people up with a chainsaw, I said. What's not to like? Let's do something crazy. Go out with me, right after work. I'll buy. Something in my eyes must have convinced him I was as crazy as him, because he said, Today's Thursday. Night terrors closes at 9.30, and then I'll need time to clean up. Meet you out front at 9.45? I'll be there, I said. Wait, we don't know each other's names. Elijah, he said, growling. Just wait until I get a hold of you, the things I'll do. The chainsaw ripped into gear and screamed, startling a woman by the entrance, who also screamed. I kissed the hockey mask, then left. In shock, I, I had a, I, I had a date for tonight with Chainsaw Billy. I laughed at the absurdity. I called Zeke and told him what I was planning. Is it too much? I asked. Just like the Regal, Zeke said. That's the kind of place you save for Christmas or Valentine's. Generally, not first dates. How you doing on money? Don't worry, I can afford it. I said. But God, I'm nervous. Little bro, Zeke said, have fun and tell me everything tomorrow. Let me handle a couple of details. Relax. Everything's going to be fine. It was 9.45, and I sat on a bench out front, looking for a man I didn't know, and I didn't know what he looked like, and the only thing I knew was that he was the chainsaw maniac at the Night Terror's haunted house. I knew it was a bit much, but I had made reservations at a very nice restaurant. I hoped he liked it. A man I didn't know walked out, and I didn't recognize him. He wore a nice linen shirt, untucked, with a loose jacket and loose-fitting faded jeans. He had styled his dirty blonde hair and washed out all the blood splatters. He looked really nice. I didn't know what to expect from Chainsaw Billy, but definitely not the grin that brightened his face or the extra jacket he carried. Elijah Noble, he said. When I'm not Chainsaw Billy, my real name is Devin Hills. You look nice, I said. To be honest, Devin said, your brother and my friend ran some clothes over for me and a jacket for you. Wave at the entrance. I looked past Devin and there was Zeke and a guy I guessed was his roommate giving us a thumbs up. I waved. Zeke laughed and sent me a text. I bet you wish you still had your own place, lol. 
Zeke told me about your weird breakup with Asher, Devin said, about how this is your first date in months. You don't need to be nervous. I might be a maniac with a chainsaw, but I'm a nice maniac. Yeah, I said. I'm a little out of practice, so if I screw something up, sorry in advance. It's a date, he said. Don't worry about it. I did worry about it, because what if what I was considering was over the top? Literally. The Strat, formerly the Stratosphere, was 1,149 feet to the very top of its antennas, making it the tallest observation platform in the USA and the tallest building in Nevada. Technically, it isn't a building because it is only inhabited at the bottom where it's connected to the hotel and the top, called the Skypod, with its restaurants and stores and observation decks. Most of the tower is made up of concrete and elevator shafts. Finished in 1996, it took four years to build the 112 floors. Located just north of the Strip, some people consider it part of the Strip, some don't. It's a hotel, multiple restaurants, a mall, and tourist trap all in one. Not to mention the Skypod, a 360 degree observation platform perched nearly a thousand feet up, and it included the top of the world restaurant. Most of the features people talk about are on the 108th floor, like the Daredevil rides in some of the shops. The 109th floor has the outdoor observation deck and two more death-defying rides. It is a landmark that is immediately visible to anyone who visits Vegas. I couldn't afford the rides. Didn't want to ride them anyway. I was only brave enough for dinner and the observation decks. I normally didn't do stuff like this. Would Devin like it? Why had I chosen it for our first date? Asher and I had never gone. I'd been to the top. Once, when I was a teen. I must be insane or desperate. Desperate and lonely and insecure and I don't have a life. That's me. This would be a disaster. We took my car and parked it at the massive Strat parking lot. Devin took one look at the towering observation platform and said, Seriously? I regretted my decision immediately. Maybe this spot was too touristy. Maybe it wasn't a date kind of spot. Maybe it's not dramatic enough, like going to a basketball game. Maybe Devin wouldn't like it, but I tried to be casual and confident when I said, they have this restaurant on the 107th floor, and I've always wondered what the view is like at night, but if you'd rather we can go somewhere else? Tonight, Devin said, you're on top. Literally. Lead on. I'd already paid the fee online, so we got into the elevators and rode them to floor 108. My stomach wouldn't settle down. I'd forgotten what first dates felt like. The external observation deck was on the level above us, but on this floor they had windows that let us look at the entire city, as well as large monitors that showed us the highlights and names of the various parts of the city. We stopped off at the bar and got a couple of lime margaritas and walked around, looking at the city lights that seemed to stretch into infinity while we waited for our reservation. The view made the entire night worth it. Wow. Brain literally blue. Lights of all colors, of all sizes, stretching forever. The first impression I had of Vegas from this height was that, except for the Strip and a few hotels, was how flat the city was and how bright it was at night. We took our drinks up to the 109th floor and went outside. A mild wind blew. The air was hot and dry and smelled of distant car exhaust and a pastrami sandwich. Somebody had brought their food outside. We took a seat and just watched the skyline fade into the infinite darkness. The alcohol relaxed us and we started talking. Talking about college, talking about past boyfriends, about Devin being in the theater department, about me taking a semester off about getting dumped by Asher. 
It wasn't one of those exciting dates that everybody talks about. But it was my first date in a long time. Las Vegas has multiple nicknames. Sin City is one. But the one that came to mind is the city that never sleeps. As late as it was now, the lights will stay on all night. We began pointing out different hotels, where we thought our homes were, or where the night terror was, and we spotted the giant Ferris wheel called High Roller. As tall as it was, it was only half as high as the sky pod at the Strat. From here, we could see everything. The distant cars were mere dots of headlights moving about the streets. It was spectacular. We went back inside. It was time for our reservations at the Top of the World restaurant on the 107th floor. It was an upscale two-level restaurant that circled the sky pod, giving amazing views of Vegas. We took a seat overlooking the Vegas Strip, some 900 or more feet below. The views were incredible. The Vegas light stretched to the horizon. The city that never sleeps. We ordered and talked and ate and stared at Vegas. Somewhere during the night, we exchanged contact info. I took about a hundred pictures and posted them online. Devin did too. It was near two in the morning when I dropped Devin back at his car. I walked him over to his car, wondering if I should take his hand. Unsure, I kept my hands in my pockets. After he beeped his car, I opened the door for him. I honestly didn't want this night to end, but I had to work tomorrow morning and Devin had classes. We should never have gone out on a date on a weeknight, but it was the best time I had in months. I've never been to the top of the Strat before, he said. Thank you. He gently kissed me on the cheek, climbed into his car, and drove off. I texted my brother, I'm in love. At three in the morning, I was back at my parents' house, laying in bed, thinking about the date. I couldn't sleep. Excitement and adrenaline flooded my brain. Tonight had been the funnest date I'd been on in years. Something about Devon clicked with me. Had he enjoyed our date? I think so. I finally faded to sleep, only to be woken four hours later when my phone beeped with an incoming text. It was from Devon, and it said, Couldn't sleep last night. Thanks for taking me to the top. Are you ready to get freaky? Come over to Night Terrors about five. Wear old clothes you don't mind getting stained, and be ready for the time of your life. It's my turn for dinner. Nothing fancy, though. Mildred's Diner. I rolled over and immediately texted. Couldn't sleep last night either. Had too much fun. See you at five. I was back at Night Terrors a few minutes before five, wearing ragged jeans, an old t-shirt from high school, and worn keds. I waited a few minutes before Devon's car showed up. When it did, he burst out of his car, smiling. Are you ready to kick Asher to the curb? Tonight will drive him out of your mind forever. Tonight, your brain explodes. He led me inside and told me his idea. I spent an hour in makeup and wardrobe next to Devon. Who would have thought that three days ago I would suddenly be alive again? I stepped out of the dressing room, transformed. Like Devon, I was shirtless and covered with splatters of fake blood and given my own chainsaw, plus meat cleavers, and a bunch of other scary things I couldn't name. I also wore a hockey mask. They had transformed me into the Butcher. I took selfies with both me, Elijah the Butcher, and Chainsaw Billy, sent them to Zeke and Nestor and my parents, and then Devin and I went to Massacre Alley, their name for our chainsaw room. 
Since it was the Friday before Halloween, both the radio station and a TV crew were here. It was another charity night, with the proceeds going to the Cancer Research Center. They expected the crowds to be phenomenal. The moment we began, and I revved the 18-inch chainsaw for the first time, I knew tonight would change my life. What followed was the fastest, wildest, craziest night I've ever had. I chased people with the chainsaw, snuck up on people, tried to make it the scariest night of their lives. It was the best night of my life. At a lull, one of the vampires, a man named Fraser, brought me in Devon water bottles, and Devon and I talked. I've been thinking about Asher, Devon said. Have you ever heard of gag syndrome? The grass is always greener on the other side. Is that a psych theory or something? I asked. What does it have to do with me? Devon took a long swallow of his water and said, It means he's never satisfied. Asher gets bored with what he has, no matter how good it is, and grows envious of what he can't have. He leaves a good man to be with another, but then he gets bored of that guy and then looks for the next. It's why some people cheat. They are never satisfied. So that's why Asher left me? I wasn't good enough for him? I said. It means Asher didn't appreciate you, Devon said. It means that he's left a ton of broken hearts, not just yours, in the gutter. He's always looking for the better option, and once he finds it, he's out the door. Classic cheater mentality. Doesn't believe in committing. You should be glad the creep is gone because now you can find somebody worth sticking around for. Like a maniac with a chainsaw, I flirted. A two-foot chainsaw, he corrected. That's not fair. Your chainsaw is way bigger than mine, I said. Devin chuckled and finally said, You do realize what just came out of your mouth. I laughed as well and then asked, If Asher gets tired of who he's with now, Will he come back to me? Maybe, Devon said. Depends on if the man he's with now no longer looks as good as you do. Do you want him to come back? I thought a moment. Six months of being an emotional invalid are not worth the creep. Maybe me and Devon could actually work out. I shyly looked at Devon's blood-smeared face and said, Me and my chainsaw have already moved on. Devon and I were the chainsaw duo, and we performed every day, including Halloween. After Halloween, we dated and hung out and called and texted all the time. For Thanksgiving, I went up to his parents' farm to celebrate. They live in northern Nevada and grow organic fruits and vegetables for all the local shops. Devon never wanted that life. He wanted to be on stage and act and perform. Night terrors was only a means to get to his goals. His parents didn't understand, but they supported him. His mom had recorded a Halloween promo of Night Terrors, showing Chainsaw Billy and Elijah the Butcher. We went back to my family the day after Thanksgiving to celebrate a Black Friday Thanksgiving. That night, we hung out with Zeke and Nestor and Zeke's roommate. I began to spend more and more time at Devon's apartment often spending nights and weekends with him. Our relationship had progressed fast. Devin and I talked about getting a cheap apartment together as soon as his lease finished. I began saving for a down payment, and we began looking for reasonably nice places close to the university. I also enrolled for spring semester, though it was near the end of the enrollment date. I take it easy, and take only two classes, because I had a feeling my life was about to change. Zeke and Nestor and my parents were thrilled that I was feeling better. Somehow, me meeting Devon and becoming the butcher brought me back to life. Mid-December, Devon auditioned for a play, The Wizard of Oz, and when he got a part, I took him back to the Strat, back to the top of the world. It had become our favorite place. We kind of became accidental celebrities when they learned we were Chainsaw Billy 
and Elijah the butcher. We did get a free drink out of it. Night Terrors had a special Christmas one night opening, the terror before Christmas, to gather money and donated food supplies for St. Horace Food Kitchen and Food Bank. It was a big deal, with the entire cast returning for the one night opening. It was billed all over Vegas and promos were posted on YouTube. Chainsaw Billy and Elijah the Butcher were officially an item now. We collected wedding rings from our victims and wore them around our necks. I can't believe anybody believed that BS. And besides, did anyone think those cheap plastic rings were real? It was the Saturday before Christmas, about 11 in the morning, when Dad called. He usually texted, unless it's important. I picked up. Hey, Dad, you coming to Night Terrors tonight? I've left discount passes for you and Mom at the ticket booth. We'll be there, he said. Mom has already packed up his sack of food to donate, and we're carpooling with Zeke and his date. But that's not why I'm calling. Everything all right? I asked. You're staying with Devin this weekend, right? Dad asked. I am. Why? Don't come home. Asher was just here looking for you, Dad said. Somehow, I always knew this would happen. Did you tell him where I am? I asked. I don't know where Devin lives, and I wouldn't tell Asher even if I did, Dad said. I told Asher to leave you alone. Heaven knows he put you through enough. Thanks, Dad, I said. I quickly told all of this to Devin. It was about an hour later when my brother called, and he said, Guess who's in town and wants to see you? Asher, I said. He saw Dad earlier. Do you know what he wants? Didn't say, but I bet he wants to get back together so you can be his sugar daddy, Zeke said. Like that's going to happen, I said. You ready to scream tonight? Didn't you hate haunted houses just a couple of months ago, he asked. What can I say? I love dating a maniac, I said. Don't take this wrong, but you've become a maniac, Zeke said. We both chuckled before hanging up. I told Devin what Zeke had said as he got our hockey masks out, spritzing them with a little artificial blood. Night terrors looked bizarre. Christmas trees with blood-splattered skulls and bats hanging on them. A floating diorama of a monster Santa Claus in his demonic sleigh being pulled by giant bats. Screamo Christmas carols on the speakers. Even zombie Santas. They wanted Chainsaw Billy and Elijah the Butcher to wear Santa hats. We did our best to make them look bloodstained and terrifying. Nothing but red Christmas lights were everywhere, and even the sky had cooperating. Who ordered the dark clouds with occasional lightning flashes? Maybe we had a real vampire among our vampires, controlling the weather. Yeah, right. But still, wasn't it supposed to be clear skies tonight? The powers in charge called a quick meeting before we opened, outlining the plans for the night. We'd be open from 7 to 11, with a non-stop radio station presence and TV crew doing live feeds for the news. The crowds had already started to line up. The shadows were thick, the fog was foggier, the screams were louder, and we had extra battery packs for the chainsaws. With a ton of monster energy drinks, we took our places, ready for the night of our lives. Time to let the inner maniac out. After one last kiss, Devin and I settled our hockey masks into place and put on our Santa hats. Except for our chainsaws and my meat cleavers. I am the butcher after all. We looked almost identical. Showtime. The first guests entered the massacre alley. The speakers played screams and music and some of the guests screamed even louder than the screams on the music tracks. Amid the red strobes and sudden darkness, Devin and I were screaming maniacs. I cut loose. He cut loose. We scared our guests so bad they ran out of our room, laughing. The lights went out, then flickered to red. 
The decorators had redecorated the room with hanging body parts and more fog, and we jumped off boxes and fought over who got to carve up the guests first. They loved it. We loved it. We chased people all over the place. Every so often, we revved the chainsaws, lifted our masks, and kissed, all to songs by the industrial screamo group Thirteen Hells, a band native to Vegas. My family came through, and Mom squealed when she saw us, and Dad laughed, calling us his two favorite maniacs, and Zeke broke the rules and took pictures. Just for them, we revved the chainsaws as high as they could go, and screamed. We were so high on caffeine, I bet we'd be hung over in the morning. We were kids again, running around and chasing people and yelling at the tops of our lungs. Another set of people came through. We screamed, rattling the broken cages, and chest bumped each other. We terrified the poor people, then lifted our masks and kissed again. We jumped from one box to another, dueled with the chainsaws, screamed at everybody, threw body parts around, and did our best to startle as many people as we could. About halfway through the night, I had jumped on a ledge beside the door, getting ready to jump behind the next guests and scream. Two men entered, one of whom I recognized, Asher. He said something quietly to the older man next to him must be his date. Did he know I would be at night terrors, or was this a coincidence? Was this his way of trying to win me back? Did it matter what the excuse was? In the creepiest voice I could imagine, I growled, can Asher come out to play? Asher suddenly looked up. His eyes blinked wide. Who's there? Asher said. Devin must have heard because he revved his chainsaw as high as it would go and screamed, Run before we catch you. I jumped down and screamed right behind him, revving my chainsaw. Asher jumped. I revved the chainsaw again and screamed. Startled, Asher ran towards Chainsaw Billy. I screamed, Get away from my boyfriend before I chop you into pieces. Chainsaw Billy raised his two-foot chainsaw above his head and yelled, This one's got spirit. Elijah, I claim his spleen. You can have his heart. Already got yours, Billy, I yelled. I don't need this two-timing, cheating, stealing piece of slime. Let's throw him to the vampires. For effect, I rattled the cheap wedding rings around my neck. Fraser, Chainsaw Billy yelled. Want a free lunch? Wait, Asher yelled, Elijah, is that you? I revved the chainsaw and yelled, Yep. You've changed, Asher said. I don't have time for small talk, I yelled. We have guests coming through. Spit it out, Asher, chainsaw Billy said. You have ten seconds. The older man with Asher nudged him with his elbow, and Asher said, When you're done with all of this, can we go somewhere and talk? No. I said, we're done. You need to leave before I summon security. Your ex doesn't like you much, the older man with Asher stated. I folded my arms and lifted the hockey mask and said, Asher owes me a ton of money, and he was sleeping around while we were in a relationship. Then, before we even broke up, he moved in with someone else. No, I don't like him. And now he's here bothering me while we are trying to earn money for a charity. I'm in a new relationship now. Chainsaw Billy treats me better than Asher ever did. Elijah took me to the top of the world, Chainsaw Billy said. I leaned over and kissed his mask. Showtime, Chainsaw Billy said and revved the chainsaw. He nodded towards another couple entering the massacre alley. The older man with Asher cleared his throat. Asher reached into his pocket and pulled out an envelope and handed it to me. He didn't look at me when he said, My new boyfriend caught me with another man and kicked me out of his apartment. He threw everything I owned out his third floor balcony. I had to move home and then Dad showed me your invoice. Dad said that he didn't raise a thief 
or a cheater, and that if I don't make things right and straighten up my life, I can find another place to live. This is the money I owe you, plus Dad made me pay six months' interest. I'd only met the older man a couple of times, but I recognized him now. Asher's dad. Thanks, I said. Do you think we can try again? Asher said. Oh, Lord, did he really just ask that? Before I could say anything, Chainsaw Billy revved his two-foot chainsaw and said in his creepiest voice, Back away from my boyfriend, or I'll be mailing your body parts back to your dad. I grinned, pulled out one of the meat cleavers, and said, Now that sounds fun. Then I leaned over and kissed Chainsaw Billy. It was amazing how fast Asher ran away. He also never contacted me again. Epilogue A year later, our wedding made the news. Night Terrors held a special event on Halloween, just before the place opened. A costume party celebrating the wedding of Chainsaw Billy and Elijah the Butcher. Everybody dressed up. Devin's parents came as zombie farmers. Mom came as the Queen of England, while Dad dressed up as Shaggy from Scooby-Doo. Nestor was a classic street hustler, wearing a long fur coat, lots of gold jewelry, and a wild, flat-brimmed hat. There were killer clowns, vampires, zombies, mummies, and dozens of others. Devin and I wore blood-stained tuxedos and hockey masks and carried our chainsaws. The rings we gave each other were real. We had little cakes shaped like fingers, and our wedding cake was shaped like a large coffin. It got really weird when we cut into it with a chainsaw, because it had a red jelly filling. Cake got all over us, and all over the guests, and the red jelly looked like blood splatters. I loved nibbling the cake off Devin's face. Halloween is now my favorite holiday, and every year, Devin and I transform into Chainsaw Billy and Elijah the Butcher, and you'll find us at Massacre Alley. I've never been so alive. The End Thanks for joining me. I'm Gio, author and reader of this story. Thanks for visiting my channel. If you'd like to hear more stories about gay men falling in love, stop by my channel. Peace.